Hey everyone, I'm Brett, and welcome to Nightwood Guns. Today, we're at SHOT Show 2024. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna take you through the top five things that caught my attention on the show floor that you should look forward to coming out later this year. If you wanna see the shooting part of SHOT Show, I will link my Industry Day at the Range coverage up above. Be sure to check that out because there was some incredible stuff at the range day and also some stuff that did not go very well. If you're new around here, I run an honest channel and basically everything that I say to you guys is what I would say to my best friend telling him about my day at SHOT Show. So you're just getting a completely honest take from a consumer just like yourself that had the pleasure of going to SHOT Show. In first place, the number one thing I saw today was the Daniel H9. Of course, that is formerly the Hudson H9 that Daniel Defense took in and enhanced and updated. And I have to say, you know, when something gets this hyped up at SHOT Show, it's like, how much of this is a marketing ploy? How much of this is manufactured? Well, when I actually got my hands on the H9, I have to say I was thoroughly impressed. I did like the Hudson H9 when it came out, but Daniel Defense has taken it to the next level. The fit and finish is incredible, very high quality. The way it fits in your hand seems extremely shootable. The grip angle is amazing. The controls intuitive. I honestly don't know what I would have done better on the gun, but the thing that really surprised me is the trigger is extremely crisp and the reset is way shorter than I thought it was going to be. There is so much potential with this pistol. The grip texture on the grip panels are extremely grippy. You know I'm a snob about grip texture if you've been around my channel for a while. It definitely impressed. And of course, it is now optic ready and the sights that come on it are very good. I can't wait to get my hands on it and actually shoot it. I talked to the guys at Daniel Defense and they seemed excited to get one out to the channel. So definitely look forward to a review of the H9 in the future. The number two thing that caught my eye at the show today was the new Staccato C. And no, this is not the single stack Staccato C of yesteryear. This uses the Staccato CS magazine, which is of course slimmer and thinner proprietary magazine so that it reduces the girth of the grip of the gun and it has a four inch barrel. This staccato is the best feeling staccato I have ever felt and anyone who's been around my channel for a while knows that I am a big staccato fan. This thing just balances extremely well. Going into the show when they announced the new Staccato C, I kind of rolled my eyes and I'm like, okay, so it's like a Staccato C2, but on a Staccato CS frame, big whoop. They're just kind of double dipping and taking people's money. Absolutely not. This is a necessary pistol. What it does is it takes a 2011 and makes it feel in your hand like a 1911. So if you're somebody who really likes the way 1911s feel and 2011s, the grip is just too fat for you, this is the perfect gun. This is going to be a great option for home defense, fun at the range, or even concealed carry since it is a slimmer profile. But be aware, the Staccato C does suffer from X macro disease where the bumper on the magazine sticks out so far you have this extremely long grip when the magazine is inserted. So if you currently concealed carry a full size pistol, this is just a more comfortable way to do so. It balances much better than the CS and it feels much more comfortable than full size offerings like the Staccato P. So the third thing that caught my eye today was the Lipsy's exclusive Smith & Wesson Ultimate Carry J-Frame. So this is the J-Frame that we all know and love with no internal lock on it. Upgraded sights, they are XS sights with a nice deep U-notch. The, the sights are exactly what you would want on a J-frame. And it also comes with VZ grips and an enhanced action job. So this thing really thoroughly impressed me. It was the little update that the Smith & Wesson J-frame needed. And I think we're all glad to see another J-frame option that does not have an internal lock. So this little revolver is pretty cool because they are releasing it in 32 H&R Magnum, which is a really neat option. And of course, it's also being released in 38 Special, and we are going to be getting a stainless steel option and a black option as well. If you are looking to update your extremely old carry J-frame, or if you're looking to purchase your first J-frame, this is 100% the way to go. It's going to be ready to rock out of the box with an excellent trigger and upgraded sights, good grips. This is honestly a win for Lipsies, and I'm gonna do my darndest to get my hands on it for the channel because you know I'm a revolver guy. The fourth thing that caught my eye is the Palmetto State Armory 5.7 Compact Rock. Now this is really cool because it's their 5.7 pistol, 
but like Glock 19 size. This makes it the most compact 5.7 pistol on the market and the one best tuned to concealed carry. This honestly just felt excellent in the hand. It's that Goldilocks size, and it still maintains a 20 round magazine capacity. The full size 5.7 rock has a 23 round capacity, so this one's gonna be 20 plus one. And while I'm not somebody who would ever carry 5.7, I think it makes for an excellent option for those people who just simply can't handle the recoil impulse of a nine millimeter, whether you have arthritis or you have weaker hands for whatever reason, I think the 5.7 can make a decent option, certainly better than 22. I think an argument could be made that it's better than 380. So seeing a compact 5.7 was definitely a treat and not something I was expecting to see at the show. So thumbs up to Palmetto State Armory for being the innovation that we need and for being made in America. And my fifth highlight today is a German revolver manufacturer called Spore. This also isn't something I was expecting to see at the show today, but I was very impressed with. They are going to be making high-end revolvers for both carry and competition. The actions on these were amazing. They lock up like bank vaults and just overall precision German engineering always impresses and these are some of the best revolvers I have held in a while. Now, this would have been higher up on my list, but they are very highly priced, kind of in the two to 4K range, depending on which model you get. But the revolvers were so cool and so high quality that I had to give them a shout out in the top five because it definitely caught my eye and it definitely impressed. Before we wrap up, a couple of honorable mentions from today. Number one is gonna be the new Archon pistols. They are extremely modular. You can adjust the grip length from being subcompact, compact to full size, and you can put like a million different back straps on there. Very highly tunable and modular design. Also, finally, after all of these years, North American Arms is releasing an actual swing out cylinder design of their famous pocket single action revolvers. This is something that people have been asking for forever and they finally engineered it, designed it, and will be releasing it. So I'm looking forward to getting my hands on that one because I've loved North American Arms revolvers for a very long time. Palmetto State also impressed again by quickly cobbling together their little MP7 clone that we've all been dying to see. Got to hold it. It's pretty neat. It is a really fun design and I hope to get my hands on it one day because I would love to shoot this thing and kind of LARP MP7 style. <laughs> there is so much going on at SHOT Show and these were the things that really caught my eye that I wanted to share with you guys from my first day walking around the show floor. There will be plenty of more to see day two because I probably only got through half, maybe even less than that of all of the vendors. Tomorrow, I'm going to be checking out Beretta, Stealth Arms, and Oracle Arms. So if you want to see something on the Platypus, the 2311, or any of the new offerings from Beretta, be sure to stay tuned. Other than that, who knows what else I'm going to find out there. If you missed my video on the wins and fails at Industry Range Day, I'll link it up there again for you. So be sure to check that out. Lots of great shooting footage in that video. Other than that, it was great seeing you guys again, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm Brett, and this was Nightwood Guns. Nightwood out.